انما يخشى الله من عباده العلماء بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علامہ سید محمد حسین طبع طبائی The author of تفسیر المیزان His father سید محمد قادی طبع طبائی His grandfather was among the students and associates of آیت اللہ شیخ محمد حسن نجفی The author of جواہر الکلام He wrote his letters and notes. He was a mujtahid, qualified in many sciences including Raml and Jafr. He had no children. One day when he was reciting the Holy Quran and reaches this verse, وَأَيُّوبْ إِذْ نَادَى رَبَّهُ أَنِّي مَسَّنِيَ الظُّرْ وَأَنْتَ أَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ And Ayyub when he cried to his Lord saying, Harm has afflicted me, and you are the most merciful of the merciful. His heart breaks, and he gets sad for not having a child. That moment he senses that is if he prays and asks the Almighty, his wish will be granted. He prays and he is blessed with a pious son, the father of Marhum Allama Taba Tabai. His father too, after being blessed with a son, names him after his grandfather, that is Muhammad Hussain. Born on the last day of the Hijjah, 1321, 18th of March, 1904. His ancestors from the paternal side are from the sons of Imam Mujtaba alayhi salam. And from the maternal side, his lineage continues from Sayyid al-Shuhada, Imam Hussain alayhi salam. His mother, when he was five, and his father, when he was nine years old, pass away, leaving behind two sons, Muhammad Hussain, and his younger brother, Muhammad Hassan. From 1911 to 1917, after learning Qur'an, he studies Gulistan and Bustan of Sa'di and learnt calligraphy. He started his religious education in 1918 at the age of 14. He studied in Madrasa Talibiyya in Tabriz for seven years. He then moved to Najaf with his brother and stayed there for 10 years. His teachers in mathematics, Aqa Sayyid Abu Al-Qasim Khansari, in fiqh and in usool, Ayatollah Naini and Ayatollah Isfahani, in philosophy, Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Hussain Baatkubi, in akhlaq, irfan and in hadith, Ayatullah Sayyid Ali Qadhi Taba Tabai Allama Taba Tabai says after arriving at Najaf and foreseeing the tough path ahead I sought help from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and not long after my tawassul and seeking help from him Ayatullah Qadhi Taba Tabai came to me and said You had a request from Imam Ali alayhi salam. He has sent me to you. From now we will have two sessions, two lessons a week. In that very meeting he said, اخلاست را بیشتر کن و برای خدا درس بخوان زبانت را هم بیشتر مراقبت نما. Increase your sincerity and study for God. Control your tongue a lot. His services and his source of income. 
due to financial crisis and funds not being received from his ancestral farms he was bound to return to Iran he stayed in his village Shadabad and occupied in farming his son Sayyid Mahdi Abdul Baqi Tabatabai says my father worked very hard all day in the fields he worked all year round even in the most severe conditions in winter in snow and in rain with an umbrella in hand and wearing a pusteen a sheepskin for him working in extreme weather was normal it took him 10 years of painstaking hard work after his return from najaf to fix the land its irrigation vegetation crops etc His son says my father was a skilled shooter he had a wonderful aim and he was a skilled jockey a calligrapher an artist a poet and was second to none in these skills in Tabriz he was an expert in agriculture and architecture he was the architect and the builder of the Hujjat mosque in Qom No wonder he was named an Allama. Allama Tabatabai moved to Qom in 1946. His son says, initially we stayed at our relatives and later my dad rented a room that was divided into two with a curtain. Allama Tabatabai was also a talented poet. He composed his poetry mainly in Persian. but occasionally in arabic as well allama tabatabai was known as qadi as he was from the sada the descendants of tabatabai and as mark of respect to his ustad ayatullah al uzma sayyid ali qadi tabatabai he preferred not to be known by that name The noble Allama Sayyid Muhammad Hussain Tabatabai always talked about abad eternity and he by submitting to the almighty Allah the eternal remained forever Allama's daughter says one day my father says to my mother Tabriz is no place for me to continue my studies to benefit from the mentors and further continue with my studies i must move to najaf but he was short of funds my mother sees that my father is upset she sells her personal effects that she was given by her parents and avails the funds my father hands over the charge of his farms and sets off for najaf to continue and complete their studies the two brothers were not alone anymore both had got married both the families along with karbala i quni and sultanat khanum their servants set off for najaf they settle down in a humble house in imar in najaf and start their new life not long after their arrival at najaf my father then 24 and my mother 19 the 18 month old child fell ill and dies one day my mother who was extremely sad says to my father i can't forget my son in this land away from our home no one but a few have condoled us let's return to tabriz at least we have our own people there suddenly someone knocks the door my father rushed to open it was ayatullah sayyid ali qadi tabatabai the young couple were overjoyed at seeing him we talked for an hour and felt happy he wanted to leave and as it is a custom we went to see him off to the door A few steps to the door Ayatullah Qazi stops turns and says to my mother Don't worry soon you will be blessed with a son He is a boy and his name is Abdul Baqi 
he will remain for you. He said farewell and left. Not long after the glad tiding, my mother gives birth to a brother, Sayyid Mahdi Abdul Baqi Taba Tabai. Allama Taba Tabai left behind two sons and two daughters, Sayyid Abdul Baqi and Sayyid Nuruddin. His son in law is another noble, Shaheed Ayatullah Quddusi. Throughout his life, Allama Taba Tabai replied to the youth. In one of the letters, a young lad writes to him, To his eminence, Ayatullah al Uzma Taba Tabai. I am a 22 year old lad. The circumstances I live in and my lifestyle, my desires override me and my hopes are endless and have entangled me. They do not allow me to move towards the Almighty. I hereby request you to help me. What shall I do to control myself? And this bad spell which everyone is afflicted with is broken. So that prosperity rules on me. I don't want your advice, but a command, an order, and a prescription for me to win over my soul. In reply, Ayatullah Allama Taba Tabai says, To succeed and to reach your aims mentioned in your letter, you must first try and repent. Then monitor your performance and take an account of yourself, muraqaba, muhasaba, as such. Every morning when you wake up, you must truly intend that in every task you will observe the pleasure of Allah. This way, every effort of yours, you have observed the benefit of the hereafter. Such that if there wasn't a benefit in the hereafter, you will not do it. A few minutes before you sleep, think about your activity of that day and look into every act that you have done. For every action that attracted the pleasure of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, be thankful and repent for every wrong you have done. This is tough and it tastes bitter to the soul. But it is the essential key to prosperity. Every night before going to bed, recite the Musabbahat, those surahs which start with Sabbaha and Yusabbihu, if you can, which are six, Hadid, Hashr, Saf, Jumu'ah, Tawabun, and A'la. Monitor yourself for 20 days and then write to me and inform me about your state. God willing, you will succeed. Wassalamu alaikum. Despite his very busy schedule, he gave time to his family. He said, these are the best moments of my life and these moments remove every distress and sorrow from me. Allama Taba Tabai at home too, like every other place, never lost temper. None of the family members ever heard him speak in a raised tone. He loved his children a lot. He played with them. He said, daughters are the valuable gifts and blessings of Allah. They are the amana and the trust of God. The more you respect them, the more will the Almighty Allah and His Prophet be pleased with you. He spoke to them with love and respect, so that they become better mothers and wives in the future. He longed and waited to see his daughters every week after their wedding. He himself served them and did not allow them even to get him a cup of tea saying, No, you are a guest and Sayyid, and I must not order you. He worked very hard in writing the Tafsirul Mizan. He never got tired, day and night was one. He studied, researched and wrote from the early hours till noon. 
After his prayers, lunch and a little rest, he worked till Maghrib. He worked at least 14 hours a day. It was only on one day and that is the day of Ashura, he took a day off. With the Ahlul Bayt السلام, he had a special bond. One of the secrets of his success was his continuous tawassul with them. <laughs> his demise, his son Sayyid Abdul Baqi says, seven, eight days prior to his demise, he never replied to anyone. Under his lips, he constantly uttered, La ilaha illallah. His last days and moments were like those of his Ustad Ayatollah Qadi Tabatabai. He recited this poem and cried for an hour. Karavan raft with dar khab o biyaban dar pish. Kei ravi ze kipursi chekoni chun bashi. The caravan has gone and you in slumber and wilderness ahead. When will you depart? Who will you ask the way from? What will you do there? In those days when he was asked, In what rank are you in now? He replied, Maqam e The rank of those who speak. When asked with who, he said, Bahaq, with him the right, the haq. Hujjatul Islam Marandi says, A month before his demise, I went to visit him in the hospital. That day no one had come to visit him. I stood by the door for a while. It was after many days he had opened his eyes. He looked at me as he was very much acquainted with Divan Hafiz, the poems of Hafiz. I said to him, any of Hafiz's poems do you fancy? He said, salah e kar kuja wa kharab kuja. Where me and where the outcome of the performance? Rest you continue. I then continued, Bebin tafawutirrah as kuja stab kuja. Look, the difference is from where and to where. He replied, Taab kuja. Closed his eyes and did not say anything. Allama was ill. He hadn't opened his eyes for a few days. One of his students looked at him and cried loud. Allama opened his eyes, smiled at him. The student quickly wiped his tears, says to the Ustad, I wish you told me how to have my heart present in prayers. His eyes were closed, lips moved and he quietly says, by being attentive and by monitoring, by being attentive and by monitoring. When he had completed writing Tafsir al Mizan, a letter is received from his younger brother Sayyid Muhammad Hussein that our dad. Rahmatullah alayhi has complained that you never gave any share to him from the reward you earned by writing the Tafsir al Mizan. He was amazed as this was his niyyah, his intention between him and his Lord, and no one else was aware. He then says, God, if this Tafsir is accepted by you, and if there was any reward for it, all of it be given to my parents. Ayatullah Kashmiri says, 
The night Allama Taba Taba'i died, I had a dream. I saw Imam Rida alayhi salam has passed away. I interpreted as such, a noble and among the great ulama will pass away. I was informed of the demise of Ayatullah Allama Taba Taba'i. This noble servant of Allah and another son of the skies of Irfan and spirituality sets on Sunday morning 18th of Muharram 1402, 15th November 1981. Imam Khomeini in a message on his demise said, I extend my condolences and regrets on this loss that is to the Hausas and to the Muslims on the passing away of Marhum Allama Taba Taba'i and to you the people of Iran and in particular the Hausas I condole. His funeral prayers were led by Ayatullah al uzma Sayyid Muhammad Rida Gulpai Ghani and he was laid to rest in the sacred shrine of Hazrat Ma'asuma on the 16th of November 1981. And salam be on him on the day he was born and on the day he dies and on the day he is raised to life. وَسُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمَّا يَصِفُونَ وَسَلَامٌ عَلَى الْمُرْسَلِينَ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ